interval notation. Interval notation is a way to represent inequality statements, and it's very similar to, you, to the way you graph inequalities on a number line. When you look at this first graph, this first number line, it has the numbers from negative 1 up to positive 4 shaded. The bracket at each end means that the 4 is included in what is shaded and the negative 1 is included in what's shaded. Interval notation for this set of numbers has a bracket, then the negative 1, a comma, and then the 4. You list the first end point, then put a comma, then the second end point. And if you are including the end points, you use a bracket. In this second example, we have parentheses at each end, and that means you do not include the end points. On this one, the left end point looks like it's at negative 3 and a half, and the right end point looks like it's at negative 1 half. So in interval notation, this would be negative 3 and a half for the left end point, negative 1 half for the right end point, and I would include parentheses to show that the endpoints are not part of what is included in this. Now, each of these could be also written as an inequality statement. The first one with an inequality symbol would be a compound inequality, where x is between negative 1 and 4, inclusive, meaning you have the little equal mark with the negative 1 and with the 4. The second one, where we do not include the endpoints, would be the same type of inequality, except it wouldn't have the little equal mark under the inequality symbol. Here our x is between negative 3 and a half and negative 1 half. When you include the endpoints, we call it a closed interval, meaning there is a definite end point and you don't go any higher than that end point. You can use the brackets. Sometimes you will use a closed circle to indicate that you include the end points. You may have seen number lines graphed like that before. When a set does not include the endpoints, like the second graph, it's called an open interval, and we use the parentheses. So you may have also seen those graphs. Let's see, here was my negative 3 and a half, which is the negative 7 halves, and here's my negative 1 half. So you could also graph that using the open circle, if you're used to seeing the open circle and the closed circle when you graph inequalities. Sometimes we'll have a half open and half closed set interval. Here, this interval is closed on 0, but it's open on 4. So if I start at 0 and I go up to 4, I would want to include my 0, but not include my 4. I still shade everything in between there, but I'd have to close the 0 and leave the circle on the 4 open. I could also do the bracket on the 0 and the parentheses on the 4 and shade it that way. Sometimes our inequalities are going to include two intervals. 
if I consider x is less than 1 or x is greater than 3. I really have two different sets of numbers here. I have these numbers that are smaller than 1 and I have these numbers that are bigger than 3. So if I was going to graph this on a number line or shade it on the number line, if this is 0, here's my negative 1, 1, 2, 3, here's my positive 3. Oh, positive 1, that's what I wanted. I want numbers less than 1, so I would go to the 1 and then I would shade the numbers less than that. So that would be all these numbers down here. And then I would want the numbers greater than 3. So that would be all the numbers to the right of the 3. So I'm really looking at two ends of the number line. The first end of the number line would be from negative infinity to 1. Anytime your shading goes all the way to the end and you have an arrow on the end, that means you're either going to negative infinity if you're on the left side of the number line or positive infinity over here on the right side of the number line. So interval notation always starts with the number that's on the left. So we'd start this with negative infinity, comma, 1, because it ends at the 1. And we would union that with the second interval that starts at positive 3 and ends at infinity.